Corn and Bucks County Bites. How's it going out there on this Sunday morning? We have a very interesting guest coming on today. We have a music group. We have a new band called Grunge Puppy. They have recorded a song called Drown, and they are a local outside of Philadelphia area group who really, really would love to come on the podcast. So we connected, and now I am going to be having them on my show. They're going to introduce themselves. They're going to tell us who they are, what they're about, how they formed, what are their plans for the upcoming 2021 season. Since we know that really nothing's happening this year, they probably can't do any live events, but maybe some live streaming. But let's get them on here in a little bit, and we're going to talk to the the main two guys in the band. The other, the other, I believe the bassist is not available, but we're going to have Jimmy on, and we're going to also have one of the other members coming on. And you know, they're very, very cool guy, very laid back, uh, just getting into the industry. And it's it's all new, and it's it's always like that when you're first starting out. And I know when I when I got involved with the music industry long ago, because I've been playing guitar, I don't know how many years, it's something like um, 30 years, I think it is. At least 30 years I must have been playing guitar. I was involved with a couple bands back in the day. Um, but, the, you know, we're going to have Jimmy come on. His, his drummer is going to be available. Um, he's a guitarist and singer. And uh, his drummer guy is Peter. So we're going to get to talk to those two today. Um, the bassist, Ryan, of course, is not available, but it's going to be cool to talk to him. You know, I love having musicians on, love talking to bands, you know, and seeing what the music is like that they're playing, you know, what they you know, are thinking when they're creating this music. They, yeah, this uh, grunge puppy, grunge puppy here is like a, it's a grunge. Um, they're grunge sounding like Nirvana, which is very cool because I love Nirvana and they've got a very cool sound. So I'm going to let uh, the music take over for a little bit and we're going to be talking to Jimmy soon. Okay, everybody. I think Jimmy should be calling me probably in about a minute here. I'm going to do a just a quick intro. Again, it's Jimmy coming in from Grunge Puppy, local uh, outside of Philadelphia band who's just getting started. They've got one song called Drown, and they can tell us all about that as soon as uh, he gives me a call in. We're going to find out more about the band, what's upcoming, and see what else they can tell us all about their new sounds. Um, they are grunge. They are similar to Nirvana, but they've got their own cool sound. So it's really cool. So Jimmy's calling in, and I'm going to give an answer here. Hey, Jimmy. Hello, how are hey, you? Hey, it's Bucks County Bites. How you doing there? I'm good, I'm good. Good. Can you hear me okay? Sound clear? Yep. Good, yep, I can good. Hear you perfectly. Great. I did an intro for you, Jimmy, uh, your grunge puppy. And, and I know that you have, is it your drummer there with you? Yeah, I'm going to merge the calls. Oh, second. okay. All right, cool. Why don't you go ahead and merge in, and we'll start talking and find out all about your band, okay? Sweet. All right. And if you have any problems, we can always restart, too. Okay. I think Peter is now in the call. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Peter? Hey, good. Peter. It's Bucks County Bites. How you doing there? Um, good. Nice to meet you. That was good. Nice to meet you too. I know this is kind of new for both of you. Um, calling in and doing a, a Zoom call, which is not a video, but it's on yeah. a, a Zoom recorder, which is a Zoom H6. It's a recording um, for podcasting. And you can use it okay. for music, and it's a, a really cool remote thing to do. You can take it anywhere in the world. Um, but anyway, so Bucks County Bites uh, is a very, uh, very interested in, in bands in general. I love music. I love new stuff coming in. And I did it a little bit of an intro before you guys did call in. So I would love for you guys to 
introduce yourselves to the audience that's out there. Now remember, your audience is worldwide. We're in every country. People are listening in the UK, Ireland, Scotland, Russia, Asia, everywhere. So we have a, a nice base and it's growing. So they can hear you, uh, hear your music from wherever they are. So go ahead and do an intro of who you guys are. Uh, hey, it's Grunge Puppy. This is Jimmy Dilks, the guitarist. Uh, and Peter Mahaley is also on the call. He's the drummer of Grunge Puppy. Uh, we're from Philadelphia, or outside Philadelphia. Um, and we play grunge and alternative music. Um, we started, well, I started the band in 7th and 8th grade at my middle wow. school. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but the band didn't really take off until high school. I mean, I started in 7th grade because I came up with the name Grunge Puppy, and that's when I started playing guitar, or a year before that I started playing guitar. And uh, I asked my friend Josh to join the band for drums, and we practiced maybe once or twice, and then it kind of died out until high school. And that's where I met Peter freshman year. Uh, me and him had math class together, and I think one other class, but I can't remember, but it was primarily math class that we sat next to each other. And, oh, cool. Uh, yeah. That's very cool. Okay, so you guys... When you started, you started at a very young age, so you started playing guitar, uh, musical instruments at how old? How old did you start? Uh, 13 or 14. 13 or 14, okay. And you just now, I have to ask a question, so what are you in your 20s now? How old are you? Uh, I'll be 18 in uh, a week or two. Oh my gosh, so you're, you're both, what, 18, 17, 19? No, I'm 17. Seven. Yeah, I'm 17 right now. Wow, so you've only been actually playing for a few years, and you've got this really cool sound out there. Um, it's kind of similar to Nirvana, but, you know, it's one of my favorite groups, by the way. Um, and when I heard it, you know, you got a hold of me. I was like, now listen to your song. I'm like, this is good. Really like oh, it. Thank you. Yeah, it's awesome. In fact, when you uh, when we do this um, this pod, it's actually going to have your music playing in the background, so they're going to hear it on a on a low bass. They'll hear it. You know, it's not going to drown out your your interview, but they'll hear it, and then they're going to hear it towards the outro. Um, they're going to have it in the intro too. So I just it's fascinating to know that you've only been out there a few years. You've been playing a few years and you've got this sound very cool i saw your cover art for your spotify it looks good it looks really good thank um, you so tell me guys you i know this pandemic has really screwed everything up for everybody and did you have did you have plans on playing certain places this year and then it just of course it fell through and have you done any live streaming for, you know, any of your music out there? Like, you know, Facebook Live, Instagram, IGTV, any of that? Have you been doing any of that? Um, well, to be honest with you, our bassist, um, Brandon, mm -hmm. he uh, graduated high school last summer. And he actually moved away, so he left the band. Oh, uh, so, no. So over the summer, we were trying to find a new bassist. Um, and it led into the winter. We weren't really playing any shows. So to be honest with you, coronavirus wasn't the worst thing that happened because it kind of paused all bands and it gave us a chance to kind of catch up. Yeah. Um, so we've been looking for a bassist. We actually have sort of a bassist now. Okay. Um, he's not on the call. He's kind of just temporary. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've, we've, we haven't live streamed or anything like that. We live stream our practices, but we haven't mm -hmm. had like a full on concert yet. Okay. Uh, but that's definitely something we want to do. Well, that's something you can plan for next year. I mean, you, like I said, you're kind of have a base, you have a basis right now, but you know, is it going to be a permanent situation? And then once you know that you can actually make those plans, but you know, with this being out that, you know, this podcast is going to be heard everywhere. You're going to have all those links inside your podcast, which again, goes into all those platforms it will go onto a YouTube. So people have a way to contact you if they, you know, want to get in touch with you, they can. You know, maybe you want to do some, you know, auditions for some of the, you know, for potential future members. I mean, we hope that this one works out, but you know, sometimes in the music industry, it always does not. You know, it's a, it's a tough industry. I remember going through the bands I was in, and we were going through a, a few till we got it right. Until you get the, you know, you have to have this team environment. You're playing together. Everybody has to get along. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, exactly. That makes, it, that makes it the toughest thing to do. But so you guys are outside of Philadelphia now. Are where yeah. are you? Are you located in Bucks County, or how far outside of Philly are you from? Uh, I am from Chester County. Are you from Chester County? Okay. Wait, both of you, are you, where is the, uh... Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm in Philly. 
Oh, you're in Philly. Okay. Yeah. So, are you guys getting together and playing, you know, with this, you know, crisis going on? You, you guys, like, playing separately, or are you getting together and playing? Um, we meet up at Jimmy's house okay. to play every, once a week. Okay. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people were saying, like, you know, they just don't, they just get together and they play. You know, no mass, you know, because... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can stay apart and stuff like that, but it's hard, you know, you're trying to play or sing, you can't you can't do that, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. So tell me more about um, where did you get your influences, your music influences? As you're growing um, up as kids, you know, what was the primary music you listened to and how did you start thinking about what you wanted to do? So when I started learning guitar, I actually almost learned piano. Um, because my brother was the one who wanted to learn guitar. Um, and the only reason I picked up the guitar was because I was recently introduced to Jimi Hendrix. Oh. So for the first for the first few years of my life that playing guitar, uh, I was definitely like a Hendrix listener. I, I, all I listened to was Hendrix and like The Doors and like 60s music. Oh my gosh, um, wow, that's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. And then, uh, and then as I entered 7th and 8th grade and wanted to form a band, that's when I was introduced to Nirvana. Mm -hmm. um, and I love Nirvana. There's not a single Nirvana song I don't like. Yeah, they're um, great. So that's, that's when I really started listening to Nirvana. And uh, Peter, if you want to take over and kind of talk about your influences. Um, funny enough, drumming was like my third instrument to pick up. The other two were like piano and guitar, but they never really worked out for me. Okay. As for influences, I guess I never really had one starting out the drums. I kind of just like wanted to play it. So okay. I kind of just picked it up. And then later on, I never really had a wide variety of music until I, I kind of like, my friend introduced me to like all different kinds, like alternative rock or jazz even and rock. So yeah. I kind of opened my horizon in different kinds of music and now I try to play it as much as I can. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool because I know like you got to have that, if you get that old rock influenced jazz kind of pre-did that so you had jazz you had blues you had rock and you know you can yeah. eventually put your own sound together and then you you know you have the new alternative music which if you could combine all that and you have a great sound that's what people want to hear they, and they want to hear new stuff i mean they still love the old rock we all do there is nothing that compares to hendrix to the doors to the stones to any of the groups to the zeppelin mm. I mean, yeah, for sure. Combine all that because I mean, that's what I grew up with. That and that's what I played. I played all that stuff. You know, we were out there. I played drums. You know, I have five, I think five instruments: what drums, guitar, and then violin, and then the bagpipes. Uh, there's oh my gosh, there's oh, wow. about five or six uh, of them. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> so flute. It was just like a whole bunch of stuff that we could play. Like we'd be in the band. You know, we were able to play those instruments and make some cool, unique sounds. You know, it's something that I wish I would have stuck with for years. I wish. But life happens, and you have to kind of, you you have to just go do your thing. And, like, you wish you would have continued. Because you don't know what could have happened. You know, and that's why I admire about you guys, because you're young. You've been playing since you're teenagers, and you're still, you know, just at, what, 17, 18 years old. So you guys yeah. have a whole career ahead of you. And if life gets in the way... Make sure you put it aside and just keep playing no matter what it is, whether you get married and have kids or whatever happens. Don't stop. Of course. I've known too many band members that did that. They had a great band and they just completely quit because you don't know where it could have taken you. I mean, especially today because you have so many ways of marketing out there and the media marketing, you can be heard and seen everywhere and you don't know who's listening out there. And who can pick you up and say, hey, we really, we want to produce an album with you. We want to do this. You don't know. You, you get that, you just need that one luck, that one person. And that one yeah, person, sure. yeah, that one person hears and sees you. Hey, they like you. They can sign you on. I mean, Spotify is really a good start because a lot of, you know, a lot of musicians and bands have been found that way. You know, Halsey, oh, yeah, for sure. Halsey was found on Spotify. You know, it just takes that person to find you. That's all, you know, yep. creating a lot of music, good music, you know, and, you know, just see what happens with you guys. I'm, I'm excited for you. Who knows? 
I mean, they could hear yeah. you on this. <laughs> it's they hear you out there on this podcast, and all of a sudden it's like, you know, somebody contact you. They, yeah, I heard you on this uh, this podcast out there, and there's eight hundred fifty thousand podcasts. So if I've got a decent listening support out there, that's good. That's good to know. Um, yeah, definitely. So so tell me, um, do you have girlfriends and family? Do they understand all the music and they love what you do and they're supportive? Um, yeah, I mean, my family has been very supportive uh, from the start. I good. mean, when I was learning guitar, they were a little angsty about it just because practicing when you're not good is mm -hmm. kind of difficult to listen to over <laughs> and over again. Right, right. Um, but uh, no, now that I'm better at guitar, they they fully support me. Good. Um, and they fully support all the music that we do, which is really good. It's really That's a really motivational good. booster. Yeah, you um, need it. What, yeah. About you, what about you, Peter? Um, it's funny because my mom despite her hating grunge. Oh no. Um, yeah, yeah, she, uh, she supports me. She's my biggest supporter and she loves what I do and she likes that I'm into this band and that I, I support it. Um, and I do have a girlfriend. She's also, she also supports me a lot. Good. That's she's not a big hear. fan. Yeah, she's not a big fan of music either. But oh she still my loves gosh. Music. I mean, I know, she, she still loves what? music. What? <laughs> but and... you can't, no, no, no. It's people who say they don't like, like, they're not music listeners. How can you not, like, music is life. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> music is love. It's life. It's part of, of our, course. yeah. It's but, part of uh, our uh, being. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of expose myself here, but uh, when I first joined this band, I actually hated grunge. I was like, "What is this music?" <laughs> I uh, I literally like I like I was I was like I, I contemplated like why am I in this band? I hate this kind of music, and all it took was playing one show. I gave it a chance, and I fell oh, in love with it instantly of because course it's you like did. It's so fun to play live. And then and yeah. then Jimmy exposed me to Nirvana, and then I kind of just it grew on me. It's and a I good addiction. It. It's a yeah, you know, if you're gonna have an if you're gonna have an addiction, we just did an addiction show yesterday. You're gonna have it. You're gonna have it with music. You oh know, yeah, for sure. Music and art, and it kind of combines itself. You have to love music. I mean, it's something. It makes you move. It makes you sing. It makes you whatever. It makes you want to play. I mean, I got exposed when I was five. I had oh, wow. a brother-in-law teach me my first song on my first acoustic guitar. And I'll never forget. It was, um, it was Led Zeppelin, and it was Stairway to Heaven. That was the first song I ever learned, and I was literally five years old. <laughs> so oh, think wow. about that's, that. That's incredible. <laughs> so once I started playing, I realized I had a, a talent that you know a lot of people don't know they have, and you might have it yourself. Is you learn by rote. You know what that means, right? Do you know what it you means? Practice. Wrote means you listen and you pick it up immediately. Like you don't have to read notes. You don't have to do, you have to look at anything. You just listen to the song, which I would do is I would hang out in my room because my parents were kind of supportive. So I came from a farm and my parents are farmers, but I would come home from school. The first thing I do is go to my room, turn up the amp to like 10 in my Fender Strat that I had at the time. I had like 10 guitars and I would just crank it up. <laughs> I would just listen to music and play, and I would just pick it up. And it's called learning by rote. You listen and you just you figure it out. You know, you might listen to the song like three, four, five, maybe ten times, but you can figure out the notes and you just play it. So that's that's something that it, you have it. Um, you can learn it though too, listening enough. So try it sometime. If you can just listen to any, just pick a song and listen to it, and just get on your guitar or your bass, or even your drums, it doesn't matter what it is, and just see if you can mimic it. That's learned by rote. R-O-T-E. Uh, it's interesting you brought it up because I'm completely self-taught just like that. Well, then I, you are. I, then that's something you have. You've lear you yeah. learn by rote because it's, it's in you. So it somebody in your that. family probably had it too. And then you say about your, your mom, that you know your sister not loving the music, not really into it. Well, it's something that, like I said, it comes from family. It comes from history, long descendants of your family. It, and like my grandparents were a pianist. My mother was a pianist. Um, and who knows before that? They could have been, who knows what they did. You know, music is like a, almost like a learned behavior. It, it's something you learn from a long time ago. And I love it. I love all kinds of music. I can listen to anything. And I have. So I, I said when I when yours came up, I'm like, who's who's Grunge Pop? You got a hold of me through Instagram. I'm like, wait a minute, who is this? 
But as soon as I listened to it, I was like, I fell in love with it instantly. I'm like, what a cool sound. It's like, God, I haven't heard this in a while. <laughs> it's good. It's yeah. really good. So I uh, hopefully, hopefully you can take off with this. You know, make some more. Got to get out there, you know, get some more songs. We need songs from you guys. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah, I know it's your goal. And it's, um, you know, I don't know your school situation right now. You're, are you both out of school at this at this moment? Oh, uh, it's hybrid, so we go in every other. Oh, uh, you're going in every other. Well, actually, that's pretty good. You're doing hybrid. It gives you a little bit more time at home that you can spend with music. You know, yeah. Get your studies done and then and take care of that. Well, I used to get music done first and then do my studies. I did the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> so now so so what's your plans for um what do you think next year you, you definitely want to you have your bassist right so you think you're going to be making some music by maybe spring try to get some more releases out we're actually recording right now we're in the process peter just recorded okay. the drums on friday for a new single oh good which will be out january 3rd oh you do have one coming out in january Yes. Yep. Oh, good. That's great. You know, what we can do is once you have that, I can actually go update the podcast and put that new single in there, and then we can re-release that out there to media. So all these oh, uh -huh. all these podcasts are out there. Yes, they're out there. And, you know, it will die off, but you can resubmit it to media so people will see it again. And once you have the sound clip, I'll give you the sound clip from the podcast. So you yeah. share that to your friends. Share it to your family. Share it to your media. Okay. When you, all you have to do is put the sound clip in, share it, and then you can just put in, you know, Bucks County Bites is the podcast, but it's on all, like, Spotify, iHeart. It's on Amazon Music. It's on everything, like 25 platforms. Um, just get them out there to listen to it because then they're listening to you, you know, and then they'll find out, hey, you know, I'll be on Bucks County Bites in the future. We'll have you back on again. We try to get the guests to come back on like after like two, three months to catch up with them. Like we have a couple that are series and then we just redo another interview. So we'll catch up with you, you know, once you get a new song out, let's have you back on for sure. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So what do you want to tell people out there, you know, musically, people that are up and coming musicians, you might have, who knows, you might have a 12, 14 year old kid out there in school right now, wants to listen to your music. What would you tell them they want to get started in the music industry? Um, I would personally say to play as many shows as possible and to know that a lot of your show is going to be terrible, in all honesty. We've played a bunch of shows where there's maybe only three people in the crowd, and then we've played some shows where there's like 30 to 50 people in the crowd. Oh, wow. um, it, just, it just ranges completely. Um, mm -hmm. So not every show is going to be a good show, um, but you can't let yourself down about it. You just have to keep playing as many shows as you can and really get out there. Um, and I mean, like, every open mic you can find, um, every concert you can attend, just to meet up with new musicians and really cross-platform between different musicians and introduce yourself to the music industry. Okay. That's good advice for them, yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. You guys, uh, what are you doing today? Are you finishing up some more music today? Um, you today we're not, we're not recording today, okay. uh, but throughout the week we will be recording, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you have a recording studio at your house that you use, or do you have to go somewhere to do all your mixes? Um, so in my house, we have like a basement dedicated to band practice, but it's not a studio. Okay. We actually have a we have a producer that we meet up with at his house. He has a studio, um, so that's where we do all the recording. Oh, good, good. You do have a dedicated place to do that. Yeah, I wasn't sure because you know the fa as long as your family's supportive and you can have that studio in the house and they understand that you're gonna practice. Because, you know, it does get a little loud. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I knew one person that they had a garage. They just you had to go to shed brought in, like one of those portable sheds. They yeah. put it in the backyard, and that's where they practiced. That's where their band sessions were. <laughs> until at least, wow. the, at least till the cops came, and they said they were getting too loud. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I am so happy to have you guys on. I am going to put you out there. They can hear the music, they can hear you guys, um, and if they can, you know, get on your Instagram, start following you, we'll make sure I have all those, like, I do have all your links that you send in the email, so those will all go in there, okay? Awesome, thank you. All right, you guys are more than welcome, and I'm happy to hear more music, I can't wait to hear more, okay? Keep it, keep it playing, keep it strong, just keep drumming, keep, 
keep getting those licks out there. We want to hear those voices, okay? Sounds good. Awesome. All Thank right. you so much. You guys, you're welcome. You have a great day. We'll talk yeah, you soon. Too. Thanks, All right. You too. See you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, everybody. That was Jimmy from Grunge Puppy. And we will be hearing from them again very soon because we will follow up with them because that is something we love to do, especially when it comes to bands. We really love to hear how they're progressing, what's going on out there in the world. You know, where's their new music? What What's their plans? And so Jimmy, Jimmy and the bassist who was not on, his, his drummer Peter, um, they all are very cool guys starting out we need to give them uh, all the following on Spotify we can, all their music as much as we can. Let's like their stuff and share it with all our friends because they do have a very cool sound. And I love Nirvana and it's a shame that, you know, there's not more music like it. It's really a unique sound. We love grunge. So Jimmy and Peter, I thank you for being on the show. And I hope that you guys have a great day and we will be talking soon. This is Bucks County Bites, over and out.